Hello and welcome to Tea Time Augusta. I'm John Hart, proud to be covering my 22nd Masters Tournament this year. I'm John Hart, reporting live in South Augusta. John Hart. John Hart joined, as always, by Ashley Brown. And AB, this is our most unique setup of the year. At Augusta National Golf Club, John Hart, WJBF News Channel 6. And now at 10, we, at 10, we have team coverage of our snowstorm here tonight. News Channel 6 at 10 on MeTV. And I'm John Hart. We do appreciate you starting your weekend here with us. And look, we have snow here at uh, Television Park and across much of the CSRA. In fact, we have pretty good accumulation on some of the trees and shrubs here at Television Park. Bobby Jones Expressway is right behind me. It's still moving just fine, but do be careful as we get later into the night. And do continue to send us your videos and your pictures on all of our social media platforms. They are great. We also do have team coverage of this snow event. Colin Cody is in West Augusta. Mary Calkins is downtown, but we're going to start with Tim Miller, who's been predicting this all week, and it is finally here, Tim. <laughs> John, it sure is. I tell you, you <laughs> you're talking about a meteorologist that's really relieved that we have some snow. All right, Tim, and with that, we bring in Mary Calkins, who is live in downtown Augusta, where the Salvation Army Center of Hope has opened its doors for emergency overnight shelter. And Mary, I understand uh, it filled up pretty quickly. Mary Calkins, WJBF News Channel 6. All right, Mary, thanks. And emergency officials all across the CSRA have spent today and really this entire week getting ready for tonight's event. The Georgia Department of Transportation uh, got out about 9 o'clock tonight. They've been brining I-20 and Bobby Jones Expressway for the last couple of hours. That will continue through the night. City of Augusta crew, crews were out earlier today putting down salt on 50 bridges and culverts across Augusta. The, of course, the bridges freeze first, as you know, and that salt serves as a sort of a de-icing agent to keep those structures that tend to freeze first from getting slick. We already have a plan. And I can and Colin Cody both can verify that it is very cold out here tonight. It is getting colder. Colin is also outside Television Park. Uh, it is of the utmost importance, Colin, to keep warm on a night like this. Yeah, John, so obviously people are taking precautions. John, back to you. Yeah, Colin, very important about the pets, and we're going to dive into that a little bit deeper here in just a minute. In the meantime, crews in South Carolina also out tonight making sure the roads are clear and ice-free and safe. The DOT is using salt trucks from other parts of South Carolina to help. But say when there's a statewide impact, it is harder to shuffle all of those resources. Crews on, are on call all across the two state for both of the next two nights, some working 24-hour shifts. If you are, you know, having to drive to work or anything like that, just reduce your speed. And again, Bobby Jones Expressway is right behind me. Still moving okay, but if you don't have to get out on the roads tonight, there's no reason to. Just stay inside, stay in your yard, and enjoy the snow. We are just getting started, though. We're going to be covering this all night long. Now is a perfect time to download our WJBF Live Viper 6 app. The team will keep you up to date all through the storm. There's an interactive radar on there. Plus, you can receive alerts on road and traffic conditions. It is free on your app store. Tim's forecast is uh, coming up next. So Colin and I were talking about this earlier. If you have a dog, this advice is for you. Different breeds respond to the cold in different ways. Katie Park explains. Coming up, a video made public after two years leads to an arrest and an investigation of a South Carolina sheriff. We'll run down your non-snow related news from across the two state after this. Body camera video kept from the public for nearly two years shows an inmate in Marlboro County, South Carolina, being tased repeatedly inside the county jail. It has now led to an arrest and is part of a deeper inquiry into the sheriff. Jody Barr has the story. Tonight, the Georgia Department of Corrections closing the state prison in Reedsville. The uh, department says the inmates will be sent to other facilities around the state. We're told more details about that closure will come next week. Ahmaud Arbery's convicted killers back in court today for a motions hearing in their federal hate crimes case. Uh, the proceedings were held behind closed doors. Today, the judge granted a motion to prevent either side from using the outcome of the state trial as something jurors should consider in the federal case. Judge deciding what other evidence should be allowed men are due back 
second quarter week from Monday. Jury selection scheduled to begin February the 7th. Counties across Georgia say that funding is running dry. Center on Budget and Policy Priority says that as of fall 2021, more than 20% of people in the state were behind on rent. By the end of the year, more than 44,000 households received assistance. Advocates say the recent surge in COVID-19 cases creating more demand for support. Just this year alone, um, the first 21 days of this year, um, we've seen a, definitely an increase in applications for families that have been impacted by Omicron and the other variants that are impacting our families and our community um, through COVID. And Georgia currently has about three quarters of the money from emergency rental assistance left. All right, last but not least, it will not be cold enough around here to play any ice hockey on any lakes or ponds, but they can in Michigan. Problem is keeping the ice smooth, so one neighborhood got creative. After school or on the weekend, this frozen pond in Rockford is the place to be. Afternoon, John will have a lot more course coming up at 11 tonight. Tim, thanks. We leave you tonight with some of the pictures you've already sent us from Snow Night across the CSRA. <laughs> Enjoy. WJBF News Channel 6 is John Hart, still live at the scene this morning where he has been for many, many hours. John, anything new to report today? Good morning, Mary. Yes, uh, we actually just finished a briefing with Brian Sterling, who is the director of the Department of Corrections. I have a lot of new information to run down, so let's go ahead and take a look at the scene from overnight while I tell you. Uh, he informed us that this all started late last night with a report of an inmate with a cell phone, and when officers went in to try to take that cell phone, the inmates rebelled. They were joined by inmates from other dorms, and they began to try to destroy their dorms. Officers took cover in a separate room. Uh, SWAT teams went in and performed two different extractions and were able to get those six officers out of the correctional facility. Two of the officers were injured, non-life-threatening injuries. Uh, no inmates were injured in the incident. Two small fires also broke out in the yard here at the facility. Those were put out. Uh, the director of the Department of Corrections tells us these problems with cell phones are the number one problem facing corrections officers these days. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't stop, it's not going to get any better. It is just a constant battle that correctional facilities and officers face every single day across this country. And there's an easy solution, and it's blocking. So uh, the inmates in question that injured those officers will be prosecuted. We are also told there is significant damage uh, to the dorms here at the correctional facility. So those are a couple of storylines we will continue to follow throughout the day here on News Channel 6. But for now, reporting live in Trenton, John Hart, News Channel 6. It's as routine as starting the car. Directions to 1001 Reynolds Street. Plugging your destination into your GPS. Starting route to 1001 Reynolds Street. But is saving minutes off your trip taking years off your brain? What we need to recognize is that, okay, this is affecting us in ways that we hadn't thought of before. Dr. Alexandra Roach is a professor of psychology at USC Aiken. If we're not doing things to help build the gray matter um, in our brain by by challenging ourselves cognitively, um, then we're not really providing that, that base, that scaffolding that's gonna help us in the long run. A British study found that when we start a trip, our brain naturally maps out a route. Turn right onto Mark's Church Road, then turn right onto I-20 East. But when we use our GPS, the brain doesn't do this. And over time, that can become a problem. Do you lose the abilities if you no longer practice them? And that's definitely going to be true. Dr. David Blake is a neuroscientist at the Medical College of Georgia at Georgia Regents University. Will that have some sort of uh, overall decline in, in cognitive ability as you age? And we know that within that one little milieu of cognitive ability, you will decrease. In other words, the more you use your GPS or your list of contacts, the more you'll lose the ability to read a map or remember a phone number. Keep right on I-20 East toward Columbia. We need to start looking at this as something that really is affecting us. There is this environmental impact on, um, on our brains and using this technology.
The two parts of the brain most involved with our ability to find our way to a destination are also two of the first to be damaged in age-related dementia. A Canadian study found that over-relying on our GPS can lead to under-using these parts of the brain. Absolutely, there's a use it or lose it component to the brain. However, one realm of cognition is not going to have a huge impact on something like uh, decline into dementia, but rather it's really the full range of domains. Turn left onto River Watch Parkway. Just because we're relying on our, our GPS um, and we're not paying attention to our surroundings doesn't mean our hippocampus is going to atrophy. Mm -hmm. um, we just need to uh, make sure that uh, we're stimulating our brains in other ways. We, we do need to be cautious about the introduced new use of technology. It, it, like I said, it's a wonderful new set of tools, but it has pros and cons. It'll be interesting to see, we won't know, as I said, for decades what the actual effects of all this are. Arrive. Turn right onto Wheeler Road. Okay, so using your GPS won't necessarily lead you to early onset dementia, but it can definitely be a factor. One realm of cognition is not going to have a huge impact on something like uh, decline into dementia, but rather it's really the full range of domains. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, Vine, and what are we doing while we're looking at all this stuff? A lot of this multimedia tasking by its nature is a sedentary activity. Dr. Alexandra Roach is a professor of psychology at USC Aiken. She spent the last six years studying the effects of all this sitting around on the aging of the brain. What I find most disturbing is this increase in obesity um, and the, ram the long-term ramifications of that, we know that already. And so that's one thing that we, we could focus on now, knowing, knowing the outcome. Long story short, sitting around packs on the pounds, which leads to obesity. Obesity is the number one cause of diabetes and if you have diabetes, you're more likely to convert from mild cognitive impairment to Alzheimer's disease um, and, and dementia. So that is something that I think we, we can focus on as an issue that we really know how that could play out. And all these devices seem to be stressing us out. A recent Sussex University study showed that people who routinely stare at more than one screen at a time show increased risk of depression and emotional problems. We know there are certain forms of stress that are associated with internet use, especially uh, constant availability stress. Research also shows stress leads to increased levels of cortisol, a hormone released by the adrenal gland. Cortisol can lead to obesity, and obesity leads to, well, I think you know the rest. We're increasing their risk for vascular risk factors such as diabetes, hypertension, um, and these have been shown in adults to have effects on cognitive aging. Simply put, the best way to keep your smartphone from making you dumber? You want to stay in shape, you want to stay thin, and you want to use your brain on a regular basis over a wide range of cognitive domains. It should just serve as a motivating factor for maybe reassessing how we interact with technology in our lives um, so that we can make sure that we're not um, putting ourselves at a disadvantage for later. Welcome back to Augusta. Each day, you know, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and every day this week is gonna, I'm gonna still have those butterflies in my stomach because it's such a special, iconic place for golfers. While the golf capital of the world continues to serve as the epicenter of Georgia's fight against COVID-19. The support of the Augusta National has been critical to Augusta University's success in helping fight the pandemic. The tradition, unlike any other, returns to its traditional place on the calendar. 70 degrees. The azaleas are out, the golfers are, you know, coming around the back nine on a Saturday afternoon. It doesn't get better than that. And as one chase of history is put on hold. I think everyone should just be grateful that he's here, that he's alive. Another chase continues as the defending champion from right next door. I feel like um, 
my brother or somebody just won the Masters. Tries to become the first since Tiger to go back to back. As a kid, you know, dream of playing in the Masters and, you know, dream about putting on a green jacket. Once again, it's tea time in Augusta.